And Have you ever been in the situation where you've been confronted by, I don't know, a bill? Or, or it's where you have to work out some piece of maths. You've got to do some sums. You ever been in the situation where, confronted by that, you've felt a pang of anxiety? I'm rubbish when it comes to maths. I really am. I recognise it. Now, I know that I can work numbers out, and I know that I can, I can deal with numbers, and numbers do make sense to me. But whenever it comes to actually addressing something with them, dealing with them, there's a well my wife says I'm just lazy and I can't be bothered to work it out it's easier to ask her but she can just do it whereas I get this sort of almost anxiety reaction to having to to work out is that change right or how much is 10% of that if I want to leave a tip and am I leaving enough or I, mm, all of that and numbers could be quite scary can't they which perhaps gives us an insight into the reality of those who live with a condition, condition, I suppose, similar in some ways to dyslexia, called dyscalculia. Or is it, is that how you pronounce it? Do you know, the folk from the dyscalculia network have just told me how to pronounce it and immediately it's evaporated from my head. So I feel quite anxious about that now as well. Rob Jennings and Kat Edel will put me out of my misery with this. Rob, I know Kat's just told me how to pronounce it, but already I'm doubting myself. How do we pronounce it? Uh, dyscalculia. So dyscalculia, it that's it. <laughs> so that's a good way to remember it. As you say, Kat, it sounds like Julia. So, guys, welcome to the programme. It's good to have you on. And it is, I think this is a condition that many people will have heard of, Rob, but perhaps don't know the details of. And that thing of anxiety, it's a key point, isn't it? Absolutely. Um, so let's just define what it is, really. It's a specific and persistent difficulty in understanding numbers which can lead to a range of difficulties with mathematics. And it's, uh, it hits people, different age groups, different levels of education and experience, and across all abilities. But dyscalculia is really the end, if you like, the end of a spectrum of maths difficulties that affects all of us. And current research is, says that 6% of the British population is defined as dyscalculic whereas the numbers with maths difficulties is a lot higher. Um, maths anxiety plays a huge part in our understanding and working with maths. Mm. Um, and it kind of, uh, whenever we're trying to sort of help uh, develop mathematics, we have to sort of make sure that any anxiety is reduced before we start with that. Yes, I think an awful lot of us cats were um, were inspired to anxiety this week when the Prime Minister started talking about doing more maths and carrying on maths until we were 18. Never have I been more glad to be in my 60s, if the truth be told. But the, the reality is that, that for those who who are at the, the sort of the extreme, I suppose, of the spectrum that you are dealing with, who, who are dyscalculic, is that right? Okay. It's, it's incredibly hard to get your head around this word. I don't know why. But for those that are, I mean, it's not just the difficulty of putting numbers together. It's actually conceptualising numbers. Yeah, absolutely. It's, it's a lack of number sense and a difficulty with things like estimating quantity, which is things that um, somebody without dyscalculia does automatically in their day to day life. Somebody without dyscalculia will kind of pour out something into a glass and kind of know roughly how much that will be mm. or know about how long 10 minutes is, is in their head when they're getting ready for work. Or if they've got a meeting in half an hour, they'll know what what that time is. Um, and people with dyscalculia find that really difficult to judge time, to judge measurement, things like that, um, as well as have difficulty with number. So that can make it difficulty with budgeting, which is really hard as an adult, because obviously at the moment, especially, um, we all need to be able to budget. Um, and that's very difficult with somebody with, with dyscalculia when they don't really know how much something is worth. I, I have a colleague who lives with dyslexia 
and 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 one of the things talking to to her it made me realize just how word orientated society is i mean thinking about this this morning rob it makes me realize just how number orientated as a society we are how do you navigate through this world if numbers don't make sense to you absolutely i mean we we um it's all around us and and you know we talked about making sure that you have the right amount of tip when you're in a restaurant um when you're sort of uh, paying the bills you know all of that sort of is all around us and uh, it's a really important sort of that we realize that and work you know moving forward to, to sort of help that sort of situation um dyslexia is probably about 10 years in front in terms of development in terms of in terms of awareness uh, compared to dyscalculia and you're probably the latest research suggests that you're 100 more times more likely to receive an assessment or a, a diagnosis of dyscalculia than dyslexia so you know it has some catching up to do what can we do what provision is there to to make a difference and to help cat well, at the moment, as Rob just said, there is um, a lack of awareness generally. So one of the our main aims of the network is to raise awareness of dyscalculia, because the more that people say, hold on a minute, that's me, um, and talk about it, the more awareness we can reach and the more we can reach um, people like Rishi Sunak, who's in charge of making policies for people to do maths till they're 18, um, and talk about dyscalculia in that sense. For helping people, um, people can get a dyscalculia assessment to get a diagnosis um, in order to get help in the workplace or help for their child um, at the moment that is difficult to get through mm. schools i will be mm. honest again because dyslexia we're talking about dys dyslexia matt hancock's policy has talked about dyslexia in schools being screened for all children but as yet there's been no mention of dyscalculia being screened and as you rightly said dyslexia affects you every somebody every day because of words but equally um lack of number sense affects somebody every day so we feel that this should be something that should go alongside this dyslexia policy that dyscalculia should be included in this conversation for screening because with dyscalculia the earlier the intervention the better so if we can get help for children when they're young and get them the right help and help them to learn in the way that they learn and scaffold their maths learning in that way then we can make a difference early on. And we can also, that can also reduce the math anxiety because math anxiety tends to build over a period of time. Um, so if somebody gets help early, then we can avoid that happening. Is there a danger with this as well, Rob? And obviously the reason that you guys started the Dyscalculia Network was because you recognised there was a lack of provision for people who were struggling and living with this condition. I read one story, incredible story, uh, of one young woman who said that to try and work out what 10 minutes actually is, she thinks of it in terms of three songs, which is a great way of dealing with it. But But people are having to come up with these, people were having to come up with these solutions on their own. Is there a danger that, that people like me, who have maths anxiety, who struggle with, with working out the tips, that actually we almost devalue the reality of the experience of those who actually have dyscalculia yeah I think <clears throat> people with dyscalculia have massive challenges and over the years they've kind of worked out their own strategies that work best for them and I think that's really important that you know without the awareness and without the education that Kat talks about scaffolding and help and I think the help also needs to extend to adults as well so that there's lots of people who contact the network and say you know that's me you're describing me and uh, what help can I get? Because I've always struggled with maths. Or we get a lot of people that contact us and say that I can't move up into the next level of my job because I don't have a math GCSE. So again, all of the sort of stuff that goes on in schools, we're working to provide awareness and resources to help adults who have gone beyond the school. And just in the, the last couple of moments that are available to us, Kat, just, just unpack for us a bit what at the network you are able to do if people get in touch with you. Well, first of all, if they're looking for just general help and advice on dyscalculia, obviously Rob and I do our best to answer all those type of inquiries. 
We have an assessor and tutor index um, on a postcode finder on our website, www.discalculonetwork.com, where people can search in their area for an assessor or tutor for their child. Via our social media, um, we advertise courses for teachers and educators and also things for parents. And very excitingly, we are hosting on March the 3rd uh, this year, the first Discalculia Day. Um, and we will be launching on that day a whole day of webinars for teachers on Discalculia with world-renowned experts and also webinars for parents all day on how they can help and support their children um, and also top tips for adults on how they can um, make better use of um, use of their skills they do have to help them with their maths, top tips for adults on dealing with dyscalculia. But I think coming back to your point um, that Rob answered about people saying that maths, um, maths is rubbish, they're rubbish at maths, that does devalue um, people who have dyscalculia in some way. Um, and we always say to parents, be really, really careful, you know, what you get, the impression you give to children about maths, because if you project your your uh, thinking about maths being difficult and being rubbish at maths onto your children, sometimes that gives them a negative yeah. um, yeah. connotation. And I think it's really, really um, important to think about those people who genuinely really struggle with maths in that situation. Absolutely. It is an incredible condition and those who live with it, and you read some of the stories through the network and various organisations, support peer groups that are supporting one another. You read the stories of how people learn to deal with things and learn to cope with things. It is inspiring how some people are still navigating life effectively despite carrying this burden. But if you would like to find out more and if you would like to find out some of the support that's available, including that day that is coming up, then you can have a look at the Discalculia Network. Discalculia is spelled to D-Y-S-C-A-L C-U-L-I-A Discalculia Network Have a look at your, for yourself Rob Jennings and Kat Eagle My guests this morning Tell us about the work that they do guys Thank you for coming on And uh, we Thank look you. forward to hearing more in the future Thank you very much Thank you, Thank you.